T-Man 978 Chill Review. Hello everyone, T-Man 978. Right now I'm going to be taking a look at Fans Toys Rig. He is FT47. Of course, he's supposed to be Transformers Generation 1 Huffer. The packaging looks like this. Here's some stuff on the back. I'll let you see the bio right there. Pause if you want to read it. Uh, yeah, here is the collector's card. It has stats on the back and it has the same bio instruction manual. Kind of short because he doesn't have, he has a, a lot of steps, but mm, they were able to get these pictures small. But um, things he comes with besides what you see is this head right here. Nicely painted and sculpted. He's either yelling or screaming, whichever you pick. He has this bigger rifle right here. It has a port. I tried to put Optimus Prime's blast in there and it won't work. That's unfortunate. Nicely sculpted. I believe it's fully painted. He also has these two weapons. This one, I guess you could make this double as like a welding tool because it has that right there. And he has the hand blaster right there. If you want to, you can fold the handles up on both guns and plug them into this gun right here. Because it has that rectangular port on the side. The handles on this look like that. It has the pegs that fits into the hands. The smaller guns work great, but this big gun seems to have a problem with wanting to pour in there because that peg seems to be bigger. So what I do is not kill myself and just make him grip it. This adjusts and you see the awkward placements of his arm. If you bend his arm like this, that's your best bet if you want to have him actually holding it with both hands and turning his head like that. That's the best way if you want him actually holding it with both hands. You don't have to do that. All right, now let's take a look at Rig. He looks a ton like the cartoon image. That's what they're going for here like the disproportionate shoulders instead of the shoulders being like up here where they should be they're spread out and they bend at an angle which was actually cartoon accurate and if i could find my g1 toy which i, I, I can't find it i would actually show you but here's a close-up on this face right here like super way more cartoon accurate than the bad keep one and as you can see he has that sparkly sheen to him like fans toys and robot paradise like to use wink wink but um yeah only thing throwing it off a little bit is this part right here but um yeah you've seen him without that logo it's driving me crazy he's about to get a logo now what you might not be able to tell is the arms aren't pure silver they're like a brush nickel type color like they're definitely not completely silver there's a hint of like brown and i said it's brush nickel that that should be good enough for you but um when i opened him he doesn't come like this per se the legs were together and his waist was turned around basically all i had to do was turn it around Pig for Life, I saw in his live stream that he said that this flap right here was above the head. When I go to transform him, I'll let you see that flap, or you can go watch Pig later. But well, let's get into the articulation. The head can look, look up, and it can rotate. There you go with that. The shoulders go out to here. They rotate right here. You get a 90 degree bend here, rotation right there. The hand rotates and the fingers just open up that Y right there and shut into a fist. If you have a problem where while you're moving this, this panel is like 
going down like that, that's because this is supposed to be up and his backpack needs to be pressed into there. If it's not, that's what's giving you that problem. You do get a waist. You get a little bit, a little tiny ab crunch. You see it coming out right there? I actually opened that up and I'm gonna show you the footage after I finish all this, but legs go out to the side that much, swivel that much, go back, they come forward to here before you have to move the crotch panel. But you can kick all the way forward. And this is what you're working with if you're looking at want to know what that looks like. You bend slightly more than 90 degrees. And you get ankle pivot. And the foot actually rotates. So maybe that's useful to you. But yeah. Here's that footage. All right, here's this footage of me taking off his butt plate so I can get at this ab crunch. That is literally the tiniest amount of ab articulation and it's nice that they added it, but it's almost not worth it. Be careful taking this apart because this thing that hold makes the legs ratchet, um, it has a spring on it and that fell on the floor. This is the yeah, <laughs> be careful. That's his butt plate, by the way. He looks like the cartoon made out of good materials. Like, I believe a lot of this lower leg is made out of die cast. This is made out of die cast. And most of this chest and some of the components inside of the backpack are die cast. So. Yeah, he looks like what he's supposed to look like. If I had one complaint, I wish the foot could rock forward and back. Because that definitely helps with posability and here he is with one leg forward or with the crotch skirt pushed forward a little bit I mean he wasn't the most dynamic character so what you gonna do and unfortunately you do have to worry about things like his arm does not stretch outward all the way due to how he's proportioned but like I said it's accurate the easiest way to swap heads I'm gonna move that out the way so it doesn't get in the way and pull this away from there now we can just turn that around grab his head and slide it forward the hinge looks like this so now we can take this head put it on there plug it and bring it back around Let's go make sure that the arms are in their place. Snap that back together. Bring this part back down. And now he's, hey, aren't we moving the parts over here? Or whatever you want to make him be doing. But there you are that. I forgot to mention that the labels I'm using or the stickers I'm using are called Repro Labels. See that up there? It's from a company called Toy Hacks with an X dot com. You can order your own thing. Ooh, if anybody asks me that in the comments, I'm not replying. If you, I asked that question and then you are still watching, go down there and delete that question. I feel like Braun is taller, but they're kind of the same height. Here's Masterpiece Skids for Carbot comparison right there. Here are all the initial Wave 1 mini bots right here through various companies and whatnot. Official, X Transbots, Bad Cube, Fan Stories. And Optimus Prime, of course, MP44. And here's Bad Cube's Huff, a figure that has been comfortably living in my collection for the longest time. Um, only notable difference, well, main thing is, he's a little bit shorter, the face is a little bit less cartoon accurate, the arm placements is less accurate, um, die cast only in the feet. Sorry. It has double jointed elbows. So it does bend more than 90 degrees. This is the backpack. Which is less cartoon accurate. You still see this detail back there. But yeah, they pretty much come with like the same amount of accessories. The fan stories is definitely significantly higher. And he doesn't have the crotch skirt thing 
that actually moves and I, I will admit I do like that. I hate crowd skirts, so there you are. All right, I said feelings on robot mode, so yeah, let's move on. You should have been paying attention. I'm not going to re rehash what I just said. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is shut the hands. And I'm going to rotate the fist this way. Keeping the elbow, the elbow bend forward. But there may be some minor alterations on the way. I'm not going to kill myself with that. Then I'm going to rotate the feet this way on both sides. Rotate this. And go ahead and lift this up right here on the side of the body. Lift that up. And go ahead and pull this off. Pull this away from there. Move the arms down and out to the side, really. Down and out to the side. Now, we can pull this away. There is a secondary hinge right there. So we can get that away. We can actually shut this now. But these wheels actually pull out and click. So there's that. There's a peg, just lightly put it there for now. Now all of this, I'm gonna bring this out. This may or may not fold on you, but I'm just letting you see that now. Make sure it stays like that. Bring that down and bring this panel out. Go ahead and lift this up. And now it kind of like locks in right here, but it pegs in up here. So what I'm gonna do is unpeg that and move that out right here. Same deal over here. Put my finger in there, pull that peg out. And I got it to completely loosen up. All right. Now we can, all of this was accordion like this. I'm going to unaccordion and move that down there and just leave it dangling for a second. Back here, this was up like this. We're going to bring this away from there. This thing right here pushes in right there. I'm going to slide it away from the body as far as possible and then I'm gonna go ahead and move these wheels out here like this so I can actually push this forward and now I can move one wheel out until it clicks and move the other wheel out until it clicks <laughs> and now I'm going to bring this panel up while bringing this one back down. And we can go ahead and this ends right here. It's kind of tight. Kind of, I'm going to push them both at the same time until it's down like that. But basically, we need to kind of get it flush on both sides and push this panel where it needs to be. It needs to be on that peg right there. A lot of this assembly right here, die cast. So now we can actually groove this right here. It grooves behind the little arm cavity. So now we can push this down. You can rotate the head around. I don't want to do that because I don't want to risk scraping anything up against his face, but make sure that's in place. And now that we've pushed that back in, we'll push this back forward. 
you can actually take this and plug it into that empty space you saw. Now we can start messing with this. I'm going to unclip this right here on his legs. Doing that on both sides. And as we like to say in the business, I'm going to kind of combine a wars that right there and put this clip back down. It doesn't really pay. But when you when you move the legs up here, it doesn't really pay. But yeah. No, but I'm gonna put it right there. There are little peg holes in the back of his legs that this piece right here pegs up into. I wouldn't squeeze that just yet. Let's mess with this thing. So up here, make sure that the, this windshield stayed straight. These panels, we're going to bend them with this double hinge outward, like that. And now there are little tiny pegs that go into the windshield. Make sure that they actually do that. And up here, this part is not going to be easy for me. It's not, I'm not going to be able to do this move out. I'll try this a few times. I'm just not. I'm going to bend that hands And basically, we need to get these arms out the way. But these flaps on the bottom of the feet need to come out, straighten up. And then we need to line this double hinge up. Like this. Do that on both sides. And now we can bring this. These two pegs need to fit into there while these two pegs go like kind of behind this. But basically, line this up. Keep maneuvering those hinges back there. What's even more difficult is this peg needs to go into there at the same time. So basically, try to get one side going. Open that up wide enough so that the pegs can be in between there. And get the one side in and peg that in. Then we should be able to slide this one in and that one in. And then back here, these two flaps or slits, or those two flat parts need to go into a slit that's right there on both sides. So let's do that. Yeah, there we go. Make sure the windshield is shut in there. And then right here, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to move this hand into there like this, and I'm going to adjust the hand like that. Move the arm in and adjust the hand like that. Right here, these are the covers. I'm gonna rotate one down so I can get the other one up. And this is actually shaped to fit the hand in there like that. So that's why that's important to do it like that. Or have this hand in this orientation, I mean. Now we can kind of squeeze on there to make sure that stuff is pegged together. And the final thing is we need to make these shoulder things come in, come in like that. But basically, he's done. He is a little truck. And the wheels are rubber. They roll very nice. I love it. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Here's what this is looking like. Nice. You can't really. I mean, if you try hard enough, you can see in there. Yeah, I can see it with my naked eyes, but the lighting here it is what it is. Yeah. Let me make sure that certain stuff is 
squeeze the way it's supposed to be squeezed. This is what this looks like. You don't gotta look under there. Plus, the rear end of a tractor trailer or a truck like this is usually hollow back there. So yeah, only like robot -y kibble. Now, if this was a real truck, this could pass as a real truck. Only thing is you can see in there a little bit and there are no seats. Back here, there is a little hitch right there. What you're supposed to do is take this gun right here and I'm gonna go ahead and put these weapons on there as well. Now basically, that can rotate back there and it grooves between this. So now you can have like an anti-aircraft type thing or you can bend it down and now it's just stored back there like this. So, yeah, here's everything that comes with them except his extra hand. Or if you want, you can take MP44's trailer, groove it in there the same way because that are some a little gap right there. Groove it in there the same way you did the gun, basically. And now he can pull and pull your MP44's trailer. Isn't that awesome? And it can turn about that much before it's bumping. And let's see if he can actually fit inside the trailer. Need to take the roller out. But, uh. Yeah. <laughs> you can actually fit in there completely, totally. Like there's nothing injuring him. That is. freaking awesome. That he's small enough to fit in there and roll out. That is very, very cool. I wonder, did they plan for that, or is that a happy coincidence? Here he is next to Fan Story's hunk. The hardest part of this review is remembering how to transform hunk. Simple transformation, but that final last step was holding me up. I had to watch my own how-to video. And the last thing for me to show is this comparison with the bad cube huff you can definitely see through this windshield and see that it's empty in there completely hollow um in comparison like wow picking them both up this is probably twice the weight this feels so hollow it feels like a nicely painted freaking generations figure in comparison, it doesn't look it has a masterpiece look, it has plastic tires, plastic everything except the die cast back here. That's where all the weight is. Like, I can't even put my finger in it because the feet are die cast. Everything else, this is like super hollow, as you can see. But yeah, um, it also has like no compatibility with the MP44 trailer. Because when it was designed, it was more designed to, it was designed to work with MP10. Like, I can set that there. Actually, you know what? I might be lying. It's a happy coincidence that this is actually fitting on that. It's, um, it's not a secure connection. I'm sliding it between this. MP10, you're supposed to actually groove it into these two pegs. But yeah, um, as I just want to be done with this right now, I like this car mode a lot. I don't really have anything to complain about as far as the vehicle mode. I say a car mode, I don't know. Uh, maybe that could have been painted or something, but... I like that you can store the weapons. I like that you can use the MP44 trailer. Comes together nice. Yeah. 
like it. Well, in conclusion, the price is higher than I would like to pay for a mini bot style bot. Typically, something this small, like a year ago, maybe a little bit over a year ago at this point, I can't remember when prices started skyrocketing. This would have been under a hundred bucks. It does come with three weapons, which is cool, and an optional face. So maybe that added to the price, but it's it's cool. I, I can't say it's not worth it if you really like Huffer. It's a very, very good Huffer. The Bad Cube one is good as well. Both Bad Cube versions are, are good examples. The previous one probably would be a better competition with this. It is stylized. But it definitely looks way more cartoon accurate in both modes, just like this does. But for now, right here, this looks good. And I like it. Did Huffer have an Autobot logo on the top of the car? I'll have to find out. And I can't remember whether this was covered or not. Yeah, I think this is on the inside. So you could easily put an Autobot logo there and it won't be showing. Anyway, I forgot to mention that I got this from the Toy Guy, but it is available on places like Toy Dojo. If I have contact info for the Toy Guy, I'll put that in the description. Thank you for watching. Until next time, T Man 978, out of here. Figure action. That one's me. Join the Syndicate Toy Hunters Facebook group. Link in the description. Click, click the videos. Click.